Hello, big dude here. And uh, what you're looking at is the culmination of our uh, rescue mission of Jebediah Kerman uh, from the surface of the moon. Uh, rescue 2 is now re returned to planet Kerman. Um, it's in a nice tight uh, orbit, 73,000 meters by 72,000 meters. Um, it took um, quite a few orbits, uh, about 20, maybe two dozen orbits. Um, of the of the planet Kerbin, uh, while arrow breaking, to bring the um, the periaps uh, the apoapsis down from a million and a half meters down to uh, seventy two thousand meters, um, I used uh, a little bit of fuel to raise the periapsis from fifty thousand back up to seventy two. Now I'm adjusting. The orbit for a splashdown. Uh, you see, I'm trying a little, something a little fancy here. Um, I'm I'm projecting a, a landing. Say a for for a deorbit directly over. Well, it it says that it, it's going to land. Again, let's try this again. It says that it's going to land on that continent on the other side, just past the Kerbal, Kerbal Space Center continent. Um, and after a lot of observations in the past, I, I think if I deorbit now, with that type of burn, it'll actually, adjusting for the atmospheric drag, it'll put me down on the Kerbal's atmosphere. I'm sorry, on the Kerbal's um, home continent. Um, another thing I'm doing also is I'm adjusting the orbit. Um, I'm raising the inclination just a little bit. Um, not necessarily trying to land at the Kerbal Space Center, but just trying to get more land within that continent available as a target. Um, just to increase my chances of actually landing on the continent. Because uh, where I was, there was very little land there. So anyway, we, we go ahead and we, we start the burn. Um, you see it's slowly reducing. There you go. And at this point, I, I must speed it up about two times normal speed, just because the landing process is, well, it's kind of slow, kind of tedious. Uh, we get rid of the maneuver node. Um, right now, as you see, we're. It says we're going to splash down that continent on the, uh, to the to the right of the, KSC home continent, but, it's not because the atmospheric drag is going to, pull this orbit all the way back or the splashdown point, I should say, all the way back to the home continent. Um, there you see the Dream Team reacting to the flight. Um, Jebediah is handling this as well as always. Bob is a little uh, concerned. Um, Bill's doing just fine. Uh, Bill's had all the pressure of, you know, commanding the rescue craft taken away from him, so he, he's, he's okay. And Jeb's always happy to be flying, no matter where he's flying to. Pardon me. But here we are down within the atmosphere. We're at 60,000 meters and descending. You see the um, <coughs> atmospheric drag is pulling up the orbit a little bit. Wait, I'm sorry, the, uh, the splashdown point, which I expected. It's going to pull that splashdown point all the way up to um, the home continent for the uh, Kerbal Space Center. Constantly checking um, my references against the map, watching the orbit decline. I soon realized that I'm going to have to turn the spacecraft around. Um, and then I have to use the engines because the, um, the orbit's been drawing a little too quickly. And I, I don't want to risk a splash down in the ocean. So I, I swing the spacecraft around with the idea I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up the engines and uh, use them to make sure that I actually end up on the continent itself. Again, I'm not necessarily gunning for the space center, just, just as long as I land on the land. 32,000 meters of altitude. 
and descending, throttling up the engine, we throttle up the full power, and again you see where the um, splash down point is advancing correctly. I missed about out of fuel. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll continue um, powering up until I run out of fuel. I'm guaranteed now that I'm going to land on land, which is all I was really shooting for. So, returning to normal speed, we are at 18,000 meters in descending, parachutes are deployed, um, Bill and Bob are getting a little excited um, as we begin our final descent. There's a view from inside the cockpit, speed is descending, uh, altitude is descending, all systems are nominal. <laughs> I love that expression. We deploy the landing legs. And with all parachutes successfully deployed, we, uh, we await a gentle touchdown on the surface of Kerbin. Uh, you see all three members of the Dream Team are calm, cool and collected. As we make our final descent. Now, this, this mission has been a very long mission. It's been a, a mission that's been literally months in the making. Um, it began with the fiery crash of uh, uh, Jeb's rocket, uh, the Ares 5B spacecraft that uh, he went to the moon with. He tried a monopropellant uh, liftoff. We did some uh, simulations. It didn't work very well. Uh, finally, we sent Bill there in Rescue 1. Uh, Jeb had to march uh, 84 kilometers across the desert. A uh, very long walk for him. To get to the spacecraft, we realized didn't have enough fuel to make it back. We sent Rescue 2, and um, we launched Rescue 1 from the surface, but we, um, we had to do a very long space walk. And it took like uh, almost an hour, I think, uh, just to get Jeb and uh, Bill into Bob's uh, spaceship. Now here we've made a successful touchdown. We'll EVA out Jeb first since he was the one that was rescued. Oh. We come all this way only to... Here we go. Stand up, Jeb. Enjoy ourselves on landing. Landing gear aren't looking all that great. 
But anyway, Jeb's fine. We set him up. Uh, so I got to pull the next guy out. Uh, Bill is in one of these other capsules. I check these two. They're both empty. It says they're empty. I know Bill's in one of them. It says that one's empty. There's a third one. I go to the fourth. And it tells me it's empty. And that can't be right. Jeb's got to be in one of those four. So, um, I checked the middle capsule. Bob is in there, but I have no way to get him out. And um, I checked the other one. So it becomes obvious after a while that I, I'm just going to have to go to the Space Center and change flights. Because every one of these, when you EVA, they become a flight. So I go to the Space Center. Um, and then I'll, I'll skip ahead when I get everybody ready. Here we go. This is um, this is Bob coming down off of the command module. Bob falls down too. Everybody falls down. Bob's the only one I, I got a ladder. And you see Bill's already in position along with Jeb. I don't remember which one is where. I think Bill might be on the left. But um, I position everybody. And with everybody disembarked from the spacecraft, um, I go and I decide to close in the camera, take a group photo, get, um, get a nice mission photo. And just like get it set up, something strange starts to happen. This I thought it was an earthquake or Kerbal quake, but um, those don't happen. And then I realized the legs were moving on the spaceship, uh, like it was dancing or something. I really wasn't sure what was going on, um, but I decided it was time to get these guys out of there. So I start moving, I start moving Bob out. You, you pull the camera down, you get that effect. I I don't know why. I move Bob out. And um, I have some control issues trying to get you know, trying to get Kerbals to walk around. Um, I can fly a spaceship. I can't walk. Uh, anyway, I pull Bob out, have him walk around. I have no. I can't really get Bill and Jeb any further. There is no time to go back to Space Center and switch and to move everybody around. The spacecraft keeps dancing until finally it just. <laughs> dances itself to death. Um, so, yeah. Uh, my, my, my guess is that the Kraken had something to do with this. I'm not really sure how or why. I, I've, and I've never gone to the forums and really read up on how the Kraken works. But I've seen him hit I've seen the Kraken hit uh, Scott Manley's spacecraft, and this thing kind of acted, kind of behaved the way that scooter that he had on the, I think it was Menmus, behaved before it blew up. And in one of his recent videos, the Kraken showed up, and um, um, the thing kind of behaved the same way, uh, oscillated, danced, jiggled around, and then kapow. Um, but anyway... Um, the crew is still safe, so we go ahead and we line everybody up. Um, and uh, I go to the Space Center, and you see all the active flights I have for the rescue. I don't know if that draws the Kraken in. I don't think it does. Remember, I've only... The, the demo only allows three flights, but I've kind of tricked it into allowing a bunch of others. And yeah, it makes that noise too every time I come back. Not really sure why. My guess is I'm somehow pushing the physics to the limit here, but I don't I don't know how I am because um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the spaceship just didn't handle the stress of all that aerobraking. I mean, it 
Um, it was flying through the atmosphere pretty darn fast uh, when I was air braking. I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I did something that caused this to happen. But regardless, at, at least the spaceship was nice enough to safely uh, return our crew back to Kerbin before self-destructing. And um, in the end, I guess that's all that matters. As you can see, I'm still jostling around here, looking at all the space debris. I get a nice angle for the group photo. Kapow. That's probably it right there. Anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed this, um, this video. And uh, if you have, please press that like button and subscribe. And uh, if you didn't, let me know what I did wrong. Uh, please feel free to comment. And for now, I'll leave you with a group photo of Rescue 2. Uh, take care, and I'll catch you next time.